It turns out plants have friends they can talk to. Kind of, sort of. Molecular biologists at Japan's Saitama University constructed a pump that shows in real time how damaged and distressed plants warn other unharmed plants near them of approaching danger. After letting loose some caterpillars on cut leaves from tomato plants and weeds, the researchers were able to view how the unhurt plants around them received the warning signals quickly, and which cells were first to react. The leaves of the plants on the receiving end glowed when sensing an increase increase in calcium ions, something our cells also use to communicate with each other. This is the latest science news. This is mind blow. We've just used human fetal brain tissue to grow mini brains. They grew to about the size of a single grain of rice and had self-organizing cells that formed into multiple 3D structures. Researchers were also able to grow tumors on the mini brains and test responses to current cancer drugs. This marks the first time scientists were able to develop the 3D organoids from the human brain. Previous developments were possible from stem cells from most other human organs. Stem cells must be given a platform to grow on, whereas brain tissue can make its own. Author of the study, Delilah Hendricks, says, these new fetal tissue-derived organoids can offer novel insights into what shapes the different regions of the brain and what creates cellular diversity. No word yet on growing mother brain. The world's first working graphene-based semiconductor has arrived. Scientists chemically bonded silicon carbide to a particular crystal structure of carbon, forming epitaxial graphene. Making transistors from this compound means operating at 10 times the speed of traditional silicon-based transistors used in chips currently, meaning it can work in terahertz frequencies and allows for the electrons inside to move with much less impediment. While rapid advancements in computing have begun to slow because of the limitations in traditional silicon-based semiconductors, graphene uses a single layer of carbon atoms in a tight hexagonal lattice, making it a better conductor and its mechanical wave-like qualities allow it to be used by devices at low temperatures. Let's talk about the color of Uranus and Neptune. New image processing shows Neptune as seen by the naked human eye, a pale bluish-green color similar to Uranus. In the 1980s, NASA's Voyager 2 took photos of the outer planets, and what is sent back showed Neptune as a much darker, deeper shade of blue incredibly different than Uranus, even though both planets share similar qualities, such as mass, chemical makeup, and size. Now, University of Oxford researchers reprocess those photos to show a vastly different Neptune, a hazy, pale bluish green. To explain the differences, the original Voyager 2 took photos at an enhanced contrast ratio to show atmospheric details otherwise hard to see, and the color balancing made the planet appear a deep blue. Men, if you're feeling hostile, just sniff a woman's tears. A study at a Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel has found that smelling a woman's tears diminished the feeling of aggression in men, which led to less aggressive behaviors. This process in mice is known as social chemosignaling and was less understood in humans until now. When tested on men during an aggression-evoking game and then retested in an MRI scanner, revengeful and aggressive behaviors dropped by over 40%, and the prefrontal cortex and anterior insula, the two aggression-regulated brain areas, were not active in the tear-sniffing men, as opposed to the men who only smelled saline solution. Importantly, this alters the preconception that emotional tears are solely human. Reindeer chew food in their sleep. Researchers at the Norwegian Institute of Bioeconomy Research attached metal electrodes to four captive reindeer and monitored them using an electroencephalograph for the next several days. The EEG found through brain waves that the reindeer were in a light state of sleep while ruminating and this is thought to be a sort of animal recharging. They also found that the longer the animals ruminated, the less they needed any extra rest later on. This is especially helpful in the summer months when the reindeer spend their time eating in preparation for the longer winter months when food is scarce. In Rosie the Robot from the Jetsons news, here's your real robot housekeeper. Mobile Aloha, a whole body, low cost teleoperation system is able to clean, cook, and open and close cabinets. 
units. This system uses a mobile base and whole body interface coupled with supervised behavior cloning and co-training to learn mobile manipulation tasks with a success rate of up to 90%. All of this results in the mobile Aloha being able to autonomously do more complicated tasks like putting away heavy cookware and rinsing out a pan in the sink. It has two wrist cameras, a top camera, and can even give high fives. At a $32,000 budget, including onboard power and open source software and hardware, the team hopes to reduce the overall footprint of Aloha and give the two robotic arms more movement freedom to reach lower surfaces. It's time for liquid magnet propellers? At the University of Electrocommunications in Japan, Jun Shintake and colleagues created a prototype for a new aquatic propeller made from ferrofluid. It consists of magnetic iron oxide nanoparticles suspended in oil. Their prototypes controlled with magnets that rapidly switch on and off. This concept would be much safer to aquatic wildlife, eliminating the need for heavy metal propeller blades that often injure or kill anything that comes in contact with them. But obviously, we are a long ways away from the fluid fluid locomotion of these robots scaling up to a fishing boat that battles Jaws. And now for Star Wars the Arcade Game in 1983. Mindblow is a Patreon-supported program, so join us. Thanks. Bye. Into the house. Get in the cutout. Use the force. Coming too fast! It's way! It's way! My shields are gone! All right! I'm going in!